No swearing for the first hour of the pod, because we do not want to be cancelled by YouTube. We would like the great god known as Algorithmum to pick us up and lift us with his holy numbers and mathematics. That'd be kind of a tough superhero name, Algorithm. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Is Algorithm a superhero or a villain? I'd say anti-hero. Anti-hero? Yes. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome <laughs> to the Board and Scale podcast. How rude of Kevin to be on his phone right as we intro into the show. It was show. like five and a half hours of play per day, and that's all it takes. Five and a half hours? Yeah. I, I kind of do that, to be honest. Yeah, you're winning. I'm watching like, or listening to podcasts and stuff. But anyways, <laughs> welcome to this podcast. Not available on Spotify, unfortunately, so stay right here on YouTube, mm. and go ahead and like and subscribe right now. You don't have to. You don't have to. If you, you really should. don't want to, but like you could. You're Play. here anyway. Play your game. Do what you want. Okay. We're here again with a, again, sporadic again. episode again. Again. But we're here. We made it. We survived. And I hope that you guys had a great Easter. Again. All three of us had a great, very spiritual Easter that we celebrated <laughs> together in the woods doing ayahuasca. I was Just barefoot. I naked. lied. Kevin's a government uh, employee, so he can't. Ate all the eggs. He did eat all the eggs. Not saying that they were I hugged Cadbury the, I hugged or Easter bunny. eggs. Really? The, yesterday? Mm-hmm. When? In the morning. Oh, that's right. I'm lying. Oh. It's not true. What a freaking stinky liar butt. Oh, my gosh. How could you lie about something so serious? That's right. You've never touched a rabbit, I'm a right? clock tower, I'm a clock tower connoisseur. All Have I you never touched lie. a rabbit? You've never touched a rabbit, I've right? I've never touched a rabbit. Clock a sewer? Clock a sewer. Con tower? Clock a sewer. <clears throat> How many people on the planet can say that they've touched a penguin, but never a rabbit? That's true. That's a pretty uh, flip flop. How many people can say that they held an allig- alligator or crocodile? Alligator. An alligator tail, but never pet a rabbit. Alligator tail still attached to the alive alligator, by the way. Not yeah. Just, <laughs> not just an alligator tail. <laughs> not, not just a, just a random yeah, alligator He wasn't tail. holding it in front of the camera as a trophy. <laughs> yeah. Whole on life. I like animals. Alligator. I like he likes animal to life. eat them. I'm not a. I'm not a vegan though. I'll still eat an animal, but all of them. Is there an animal you wouldn't eat? What's wrong with vegans? I don't think so. <laughs> That's actually what I was just about to say. Not that being vegan is, is. Hey, if you're vegan, do your thing. Do your thing, but that sounded very hostile. Not yeah. gonna lie. Do your thing if you if you want to be vegan for whatever reason. Maybe. That's uh, more power to you. Yep. You don't like meat. Every time he tries to double down and say this, it's like you're just putting yourself in a hole, dude. I'm not. Look, he's 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 got this new job. He's hanging out with a lot of plant people. Look, he's just trying to flex. I he's like, act, so he's the reverse of like, you know, people who are like, I don't eat animals because I respect them. Yeah. He's like, I don't eat plants because I respect them too much. Exactly. Right. You should all eat, protein all day. Look, the more the I more meat only you eat, eat meat, I'm a carnivore. He actually yeah. only eats. Uh, what is it called? Like artificial. Raw synthetic meat. synthetic tofu protein. Oh, you talk about like tofurkey and you, stuff. You just eat like you uh, just eat plain fake chicken, white imitation chicken, cubes of tofu. <laughs> Those are so, that, but that's soy plants. Though. Look at him; he's massive. Yeah, are they a soy plant? Yeah, I thought tofu, <laughs> tofu was, was fake. Made of soy lifetime bulk. I'm thought, pretty sure. I thought soy is a man made sure. sauce. No. I got a lot to Soybeans. Baby. I got a man made sauce for you. I got a lot to say. Okay. Baby. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the next section, which is the weekly highlights. As Whoop. always, with Dwayne, you first. Okay. My weekly highlight I played like an hour and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Empire's End. And I've, I've been trying to get this game to the table for a while. The first time. It was late, and I didn't quite know the rules, so I set it up just to tear it back down. The Sad. second time, we ran out of time, so I set it up just to tear it down. The third time, we played it. Yeah, you play games. That's what you're supposed to do. Empire's End is a bidding game where you have your empire made of 11 tiles. Each one does something different, whether it gives you economy or gives you abilities to switch around your tiles, yada, yada, yada. Um, but these disaster tiles will come out. And those disaster tiles require you to bid resources to not take it. 
However, the first person to pass takes the disaster and all of the resources that were bid towards it, and they must flip over the tile that that disaster hit, which is all, isn't always a bad thing because you can score off of disaster t- or you can score off of uh, disastered tiles. Disasters are never a bad thing. You heard it first from Dwayne. <laughs> some he tiles, hopes for hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes. Some tiles will give you resources because you have disaster tiles. Some score disaster tiles there's themselves. Um, and then there's uh, economy rounds and innovation rounds where you add abilities to your different tiles. It was cool. It was fun. I'm glad you can see the bright side in a disaster. You know, <laughs> I was about to say. Thinking of an earthquake, you know, breaking down a commercial building, you go, hey, look at all this free raw rubble we have now. So it honestly, re- it honestly rebuild. gave a very grizzled vibe because halfway through the game, everybody's sitting at the table like this <laughs> as they watch their empire crumble. Awesome. Look at you taking advantage of uh, natural disasters. Yeah, like a true capitalist. Seriously. Yeah. But yeah, start with a pretty empire, and by the end, you've got fucking just half of broken down city. All right, give Andreas. <clears throat> um, played a lot of games over the last couple of weeks. Um, played 15, 14 different games in the last two, three days alone, which was really fun. Um, I'm actually going to give it to Nar. Really? Yeah. Nar. Yeah. Pandasaurus games, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's real fun. It's real small. It's a light game, so it says a lot that that's my pick of the week. Um, you're how would you describe it? I mean, it's, it's a kind of it's an, an engine builder, but you hand, break hand management as well. You break your engine apart. Yeah, to, in order to so basically, you've got Vikings. You can play Vikings. There are five different colors of Vikings, and they've got symbols on them that uh, each color has all of the different symbols on them. <clears throat> and you can play a card from your hand and activate everything that's in your crew at the time. Um, and then you'll get all the benefits that are on those cards. And then you get to draw a new one from the respective color space for whatever color you played, um, which may not be like, if I play a yellow card, there may be a green card in the yellow space. Hmm. And then there are these um, uh, quest cards, voyage cards. Expedition. Expedition. Uh, explore. Explore cards. <laughs> you're getting on a boat <laughs> you're close you're getting on we a got boat there. we got there. yeah and um you know you have to like with your crew you have to send your crew to go do that um execute that card so if they're they're you know if you need three yellows and two greens you have to have those and then they're gone you take them out of your tableau but you get that card and that card's got benefits on it that you can use um so it's a fun little balance between you know building up your engine and then being comfortable like okay hey when am i going to tear my engine down because there are certain parts where like you get points at the beginning of your round each of your turns if you've gotten far enough on a separate track other than the point track it's a little um reputation reputation track and uh so like you can you could theoretically like lean into that pretty heavily um as a mechanism but um i haven't seen anybody try that quite yet um, but yeah, fun game, small box, um, 30 minutes more or less, pretty quick to play, but it's got enough depth and it's fun. So yeah, you know, I'll give that one my, my primary one and I'm going to throw a honorable mention and then it's only because we didn't finish it. Uh, that's Merchants and Marauders. Uh, so we started playing that yesterday and just couldn't get to the, to finish it. One of our players had to go to work and, um, we had other people, um, we're showing up, so it was like, well, hey, like, let's just clean this one up and call it good. But um, has been, probably will remain one of my favorite pirate games, um, Caribbean themed, because um, you can you can either do the merchant stuff or you can do the pirate thing. Uh, you kind of play it both ways. Um, it's probably more complex than it needs to be, or it feels more complex than it needs to be in a couple of ways. But um, it's still a fun game, um, and I think once you kind of get the feel for it, it kind of boils down pretty quickly. So. Yep, that's my honorable mention. All right. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed hearing about board games because my honorable mention is just a quality time that I got to spend on some other hobbies and with my family. Uh, and I didn't really get to play any games, which is kind of technically a lie because I did play Ark Nova with Kenzie. 
Um, but we just played just us two on BGA, so I don't I don't really count that, you know, myself. Did you win? Uh, I we played twice. I won once, and then she won. Nice. So yeah, and then she didn't want to rematch to you know break the tie. So yeah, of course. I think I technically won, but. Yeah, so I don't really have any weekly highlights, and we'll just go straight into no, trivia. No, 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 no. Uh, huh? What are, name one of your other hobbies? What'd you do besides playing games? Name a hobby. What'd you do? What do you mean? Like, what other hobby did you spend time on instead of playing games? Oh, just like in general. Yeah, I spent a lot of time with the snakes. Nice. We're cleaning up and managing their um, the breeding because if you're, you know. If you remember from the beginning of this channel, this was supposed to be board games and snakes. So we're kind of starting to really get into the snake part of it. And actually, um, I'm working on a breeding plan video for this first half of the year. Um, I just got to get some more B-roll. Oh, is this is this something we should incorporate? I know it's a board game podcast, but incorporate a weekly highlight of a game and then a weekly highlight of... One of Something your snacks? not game, like just a hobby that like oh. you did. Oh, a hobby highlight. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, for me, it's just ro- Rocket. League. Oh, you know what? I spent a lot of time watching Rocket League too. Because <laughs> I love hey, Rocket League. Hey, something. Gentlemates, if anyone's a Rocket League fan, Gentlemates pulled it out this weekend. G two was close. I'll leave it there. If you if you know anything about Rocket League, leave a comment. We will be best friends. See, that's what I thought you were gonna go with. I was like, let's talk about Rocket League for a little bit. I don't know anything about it, but. Let's you talk about it. I wish I it. wish you guys were fans. I, I like the so game. I, I like playing it, but I'm like not good, and it's fun to watch <laughs> people who are good at the game be like crazy, and it's intense, and you can Those hear the crowd going crazy. crazy. Yeah. Um, and actually, if you are a huge fan of Rocket League, they just announced the World Championship is going to be back in Fort Worth. Oh, you gotta was, go. Yep, we already booked our hotel. Just waiting on them to release the tickets. Nice. And then we're going to buy it. When is it? September 11th through 15th. Uh-oh. <laughs> September 11th through 15th? Oh. Celebrate by driving cars Uh-oh. into buildings? Uh, no, into each <laughs> other. Um, But yeah, that's exciting. We're also going to go to NARBC uh, here in a couple of weeks. National PQRSTYW. It's the National Association of Reptile Breeders Conservation or something like that. Conference. National Association of Reptile Breeding Conference. Conference. But uh, it's a big old snake show. It's the biggest one in the nation. They have a show in Dallas. They have a show somewhere in the east that I don't really care about. Somewhere up north that I don't really care about. And somewhere up west that I don't really care about. But the one in Dallas is here and uh, there's some... Snake YouTubers, content creators that are going to do be doing meet and greets. So we've been planning on, you know, hopefully trying to meet some of them and get some advice and talk to them and all that stuff. So that's cool. How do we My highlight them? is going forever. You know, ask them how to get your snakes to do the hanky panky. No, they're doing it. Yeah, yeah, they're doing it. So that, that's why I'm doing the breeding plans because we have two confirmed pairings, um, and we we have an i not an idea based on what we know. We know what should be coming out of them. So. A snake, hopefully. Yeah. So <laughs> keep an eye out for the breeding plan video. I, it'll I gotta, only be a few minutes, but it'll give you a good insight into the snake part of uh, I, the board and scale. Okay. So you said the words confirmed mm-hmm. pairing. Yeah. I saw their genitals locked uh, with each other. Okay. Just wanted a. Yeah. Visual confirmation. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And if you're wondering, they also smell a certain smell. Oh, they got them pheromones. They have some pheromones. Yeah. Okay. You but learn yeah. something new every day. We have two confirmed pairings and two maybe pairings. So I just didn't get visual confirmation, but I saw them twisted up with each other. So I don't know. You know. Yeah. All right. But yeah, keep an eye out for that video. Uh, and with that, now no. we move on to trivia. No. Um, get your boards. And, and scales. Tilt your heads away hey. from me. Away from you. Yeah. I'm not looking, I promise. <clears throat> I'm not looking, I promise. Again, not. <laughs> da, 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 da. That's a freaking. Were you aware that uh, she had a, has a solo project? Who? 
Haley Williams. Is that who that is? Yeah, yeah, from Paramore. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I was more talking to Dwayne because I know he's got a crush on her. Do you know she's got a side project? A solo Haley, project? if you're watching, who? You're probably blushing at our at our big old fuzzy bear, Dwayne. <laughs> you know, I know he's he's a popular guy. Look at that! Look at that smile. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, so this first one. Okay. It's gonna. I'm gonna explain a mechanic. See. And you guys got to write it down. Okay. A lot of different mechanics here. <laughs> there is a acceptable deviation in my brain that you are just gonna have to accept <clears throat> as players in the game. Okay. This mechanic requires you to spend something of value, usually monetary, on items in an auction style phase. On goods in order to enhance your position in the game. Kind of straightforward, to be honest. Three, two, one. Dwayne's doing, he's showing his work. Bidding? I it, is, it is bidding. Oh, oh. extra D in there. Biting? Biting. He got it wrong. <laughs> no, he didn't. Biting, huh? Biting. Bidding. Is that correct? It is correct. Okay. It is bidding. You guys are one and no. Kind of a kind of a softball there, I feel like. Okay. Here is a whoever gets the most. Bordeaux. Name each species type in dominant species. The original. Oh. There are six. What? I haven't played this. <laughs> species type in dominant species. Yep. Um I can give you a hint. In that they are like a general group of animal. There are general groups of animals. And there's six of them. So have fun with that. Dee, 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 dee. You, the viewer, think of them right now while they're doing it. And if you get less right than either of them do, you have to subscribe unless you don't want to. Can but you ask the question again. Species? The question. Six Na species. This, yeah. Name the six players. Really, the six player options in dominant species. You're really struggling, huh? I, I, I've never played the game. I don't even know. What You've it's never about. played it. No, I've never. We've talked about this before. Just, I've never played. Here, it. I, I played. I played. Uh, the hint. Think of what you would call. No, no, no. General no, no, groups no. of animals. No, no. General right. groups of animals. Sorry, I, I've got of general groups of animals that are the same. This is tough, Kev. I didn't realize you were about to get smacked up like this, but you said, "Hey, get a, get a question from a specific yeah. game." I played Marine. Marine. Um, They're different. I figured. Da, 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 da. Oh man, what else is there? Um, if you guys didn't know this, Dominant Sp Species is um, my all-time, one of my all-time favorite games. It kind of switches back and forth with brass depending on the day. I just don't get to play dominant species enough and uh, as much, so I'm missing one. get a lot more bang for my buck out of that game. What am I missing? Each time. What am I missing? I don't know. Oh. You need six of them, <laughs> or you can just stop and get as many as you can get. I've been thinking about starting stand up. Just for those of you who are like me, waiting for these guys to finish. Kevin, you're supposed to be a historian. You're um, talking about an area that's called prehistory. Dinosaurs. Pre that is not technically prehistoric. Um, no, prehistory is before anything, before the written word. So, yes, that is prehistory. Yes, but those things still currently exist. All right. But the game is prehistoric, isn't it? All right, we're going to go with this. I think I... I think I've goofed it all up. Probably. Oh, my. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, I also spelled mammal wrong. Again. Cross out plants, Dwayne. Mm. I grew up in the uh, F7 generation. Mammal is correct. Okay. Insects is correct. Okay. Birds... Correct. 
Reptiles. Correct. Fish. Not correct. What's the last one? Well, dinosaur is not correct either. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what the fuck? I don't know. Well, like, reptiles are dinosaurs. Reptiles, dinosaurs birds, insects, mammals, amphibians. Mm. Is it five? Amphibians are fucking reptiles. No, they're not. They're not. Um, no, so we went it's four. definitely six. What's the last one? We went four and four. Dee, 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 dee. Please don't uh, be upset with me for not remembering the last one. It's your favorite game. Yeah. I don't get to play it. You guys don't ever want to play it. Whoa. You, no. No. It's the other one of the your duo that doesn't ever want to play Arachnids. It. Arachnids. That's bullshit. Which honestly should just count as insect. No, they're technically different because insects have <clears throat> three body parts. Arachnids only have two. Yeah. But arachnids is the last one. They are really mean. They get a free kill each round. Okay. No matter, no matter what you do. Insects get a free breed each round. A free populate. Amphibians are bullshit. Well, we're Amphibians still just tied. start with more uh, adaptability to the water. You guys are still tied. Yeah. Which leads us to our final question. <laughs> a true or false. The Calyx... Shelf is the most sold furniture item that IKEA sells. True or false? If you, the viewer, get this wrong, unsubscribe. You good? And then resubscribe. Good? Yeah. I think it's true. That is false. Cool. The most sold item from IKEA is actually the Billy bookshelf, which we have on the side of the room over there. Nice. There are a lot more readers than I guess board game players in general. Nice. So Yeah. It was it was one of those things where like I was thinking about like the times I've been to an IKEA and walked through the stores, like it's, it had to have been something that had a lot of utility that wasn't like a custom piece of furniture, like like the sofas or the bed frames or any of that kind of stuff. I was like, it's got to be something that's highly utilitarian. So I was like... Which the Galax is pretty... The Galax is very utilitarian. And but, board gaming has boosted that. Yeah, but even beyond board gaming, like it's just a good, simple, square system, hard to beat. But so these are Billy's? Yep. Yeah. The okay. Billy bookcases. Go ahead and look it up. I've been to an Ikea once. Or go watch this. And he didn't get the podcast. meatballs. We've I mean, gone over this. Bad. We've talked about this. This is the second time this has come up. We were going to eat afterwards. Yeah, dummy. Didn't get the Swedish gotten, meatballs. Could have gotten at least an appetizer well, the of thing Swedish about, meatballs. Uh, the thing about IKEA, too, because it's like a Swedish company, they also give you a European serving size. So you get like three meatballs, a spoonful of mashed potatoes, and two carrots. You know, so you would have been fine in the 10-minute drive to the restaurant. Anyways, that's our quiz section. Congratulations to Dwayne. Back on the bottom. I Kev had meatballs for dinner. Kevin is bottom again, where he belongs. And uh, that's it for the trivia section. Yeah. Uh, you want to take over, Kev? Yeah. So um, this, uh, this topic is brought on in part uh, by a current um, crowdfunding campaign for the Fox. Ex- <laughs> 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 the fox. Meet the fox experiment. <laughs> the fox experiment. The uh, fox <laughs> experiment. <clears throat> um, they are doing a reprint, but instead of the upgraded components in the first one, which were all acrylic stuff, uh, metal and all that kind of stuff, they're doing a full wood reprint, uh, which is an interesting thing because I don't really think anything about the fox experiment was really meant to be like heavily like ecological. It wasn't meant to be like... It's not like a game like Earth where you're like, oh, hey, yeah, like maybe it's cardboard and paper. Protecting the planet. Yeah, it's literally about breeding foxes. So um, it was an interesting choice. I, and it's interesting. I don't think the campaign's actually doing that well. Um, not as well as you might think based on the popularity of the game. But so they're doing a full wood um, 
would reprint. So the question is, uh, the topic is, if you have an upgrade option between plastic components or wood components, what would you rather have? Against just cardboard? Yeah, because let's just say that you're going from cardboard and you can, you know, they're doing a deluxe version of the game and you can get all wood components or all plastic components. What would you rather have? So I've said, I think it depends on the game. Because like something like, perfect example, Creature Comforts, uh, it's all wood stuff. Well, the Kickstarter stuff is. It's all wood, wooden tokens and meeples and stuff like that. The feel of the game is like you're building a cozy little home for forest creatures to uh, before to win- before winter to breed to well I feel like mm. I feel like wood just suits better for the feel of the game like plastic would be fine but it's just like and also like earth the wooden soil tokens. It just feels natural because it's earth and like plastic would be like, "Mm, it's weird. Which is an interesting also new crowdfunding question. We saw the advertisements for the new earth expansion and and reprint and whatnot. And it's not abundantly clear if the pieces that are the new like trees and stuff, if they're wood or not. They mm-hmm. look kind of plasticky in the pictures, but it could just be the pictures. So mm-hmm. <laughs> Earth might be going in the other direction. Which I'm is, sure it'll be wood. That's that'd I, be weird. That'd be weird to have the wooden trees and then plastic trees. Well, I don't think you would have the wood ones. I think it'd be like if you get the reprint or whatever. I'm guessing it's a. I don't know. I don't. Know I don't think it, about it's them. a. It's an expansion. So we're basically discussing the nuance, right? Yeah. Of like why you would choose such over such because obviously, like what he said, it depends game to game. Sure. I mean. You may have had it. I mean, the person could have a, a strong preference one way or the other. So I will say I agree with Dwayne for the most part, but there is one exception to that rule, and it's wood dice. Oh. You don't like them? No, because wood dice. I don't think um, I've ever touched wooden dice. Wingspan? Yeah. I take it back. I haven't touched <laughs> wooden dice. <laughs> so, um, so the problem with wooden dice is that um, it's much more difficult to control – the wood that goes into making the dye. So you can have imbalances. subtle imbalances in the dice that will cause certain faces to show up a little bit more. Where plastic dice, technically the best ones, if you can get the, the best kind of dice are, are transparent ones because you'll be able to actually see imperfections inside the dice that potentially lead to that. Um, opaque dice, you can technically have more problems than transparent dice, but they're going to be more consistent, especially with modern production um, capabilities mm-hmm. than than wood dice are. So also, like I don't know, there's something about rolling wooden dice. How that, light they feel. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. So I would agree. Plastic, got to be for doesn't. Obviously, that's not really necessarily an upgrade. Like I don't like, you know, you're not going to go from cardboard dice. Um, but I yeah, definitely usually don't you're want. getting plastic. Yeah. Whatever and, that is. And if it's an upgrade, it's usually like, oh, they're sparkly or they're metal. Yeah, the handful of games that I've seen that actually go the extra mile and do like metal dice are few and far between. Moon Rollers clank, 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 clank. is doing metal dice. Um I think metal dice are well, it's except a gimmick. for moon rollers. Yeah. I think it's like a decoration piece more than anything. Yeah. I, I have a pair of like RPG metal dice. I don't think I would ever use them. I have yeah, I have three sets of like metal uh D and D sets or whatever and they're Dwarven basically Forge. for No, they're just some cheap thing I found on um on Amazon or whatever. Um and it was just because not affiliated. Mm, and uh <laughs> I wanted uh, I just wanted to have some dice sets around the house if we ever did RPG stuff or if I wanted like to use dice for counters or anything like that and have some sets. I don't think I've ever I feel like you also them. need a, a dice roller if you're going to use some metal dice. I'd be even scared with this, though, right? Banging like, on the table. This like would be that. fine. They bounce and then chip against this. Because they're, be... they're heavy. Yeah. Like, they're they're not light. You need a you need a dice tray. Yeah. Right? And sure. I have, I've forgot like, a little other one that would work pretty well. For dice tray. It's got soft edges. What did I say? Did I say dice roller? Yeah. Did. That's fine, too. Like a dice tower? Or a dice cup? tower would be fine. A cup and just... Yeah, that would work. Atsy? Yahtzee? Liar's dice? Mm. 
playing Yahtzee on BGA, by the way. It's fucking hilarious. So, yeah. So, I mean, we didn't we kind of didn't. Yeah. That, the, the short answer to your question is yes. Yeah. If there's like your preferences, if there are certain types of games or in general, one way or the other. If I did have to pick one, though, I think I would pick plastic. Is plastic more expensive? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think for the most part, I think per, like it also depends on then what you're doing beyond that, right? For for quality. But if I had to pick, I think I would pick plastic. Like just the the clinkiness, <laughs> the clinkiness of I, everything. I can't imagine. I guess Cascadia has those wooden chips, like the wooden animals that you draw. The yeah. tiles, they're fine. Uh-huh. They feel nice. Because I was thinking of like Orleans, part of the, re- or not Orleans, Quacks, mm. Quite a Lumber. The reason we bought the BGG board game bits upgrade, that's the acrylic chips, was because the cardboard ones, and actually kind of like Wonderlands in the original copy that I played, they get stuck to your fingers when you're trying to mix in the bag, mm. you know, and they get stuck to your fingers and it's just, it just feels nasty, yeah. you know, to go in there and then they all, they're like, they just are like wet in the bag. It's weird, you know? <laughs> I mean, Orléans <laughs> is the same way. Yeah. So like I opened my copy for the first time a week or two ago <laughs> and I was like, oh, they, these aren't, oh, they're not plastic. I'm like, of course they have upgraded ones and this comes with fucking, car- I ruined it. <laughs> Didn't make it an hour got cardboard in it and i'm like dude this sucks i'm like i don't even want to play my copy <laughs> like oh i have no gosh. interest in playing my copy without the upgraded plastic bits it's <laughs> just it's just yeah that's worth it to yeah. me i i need to go out of my way I, I need to go get them but i also need to get the right expansions too because like i need uh i just need to figure out which the right ones are because the the one i have the invasion box set has got some cool some content that helps you know you can take it to five players which is nice but there's there's other stuff I need to get the events the, the events one events. is it, the events is that is that the cards that you put out where you can like do trade in the stuff the objectives is, are those called no events are the the tiles no instead those are, of it just being eighteen default ones there's like oh the ones that can get shuffled extra in. Oh, yeah okay. there's four extra I don't have, different phases that you can I don't shuffle. know if I have any of those I don't have the um the cards that you can trade in. So it's literally just like the the, the components that you're picking up are just for points on their own, um, but yeah, like it's whatever. I mean, I just gotta upgrade the stuff and decide how I want to put it all together. You know, as a secondary thing to the like wood versus plastic thing, right? Yeah. Um, or really just upgrades in general. The acrylic pieces, for example, the acrylic bits. I have seen people. I spent like forty dollars mm. on the set of those bits, right? Have you seen for Orleans? Oh, God. There are people who have the cardboard ones still. Yeah. And they just bought coin capsules. Yes, I've seen that. Which are the plat. And I'm like, man, I guess like monetarily wise, right? The difference, like, I guess it's enough for people to be like, I don't want to spend that much money. These will be just fine. Mm. And then they have to individually, you know, you got to put every clip single, one, every of single them. one into the can. And also, then, is it the right size? Is it the right size? Which. Whatever, right? You can look it up. But, and then I found out someone was like, Oh, I need to do that to my copy. Like, where'd you get them from? Um, and they're like, Oh, I, I got enough for the game for $30. And I was like, What? You could just buy the Giga bits for like 40 bucks. Yeah. If it's that close, it's not even a question. Now, if you're talking like, if I could get the coin capsules for like 10 bucks and, and have them. Yeah, that that's like, hey, I'm paying a quarter of the price. Yeah, maybe even half the price you could start to justify, you know. But then, again, there's something to be said for, yeah. So thirty dollars, thirty dollars, ten dollars less is that's not even a just pay the extra if you like the game enough to upgrade it. Just pay for the extras. And then I didn't want to be like, oh, why didn't you just get these? And then be like, I didn't know those existed. You know, <laughs> after they just spent thirty dollars and hours of time <laughs> clipping all the things you know that's actually a really good point how many people aren't aware that there are like the upgrade, upgrade sites bits. like yeah because like it's not like an official upgrade component produced by the company no right it's through bgg's third party whatever yeah shop you know and how often do players go and go and click on that shop shop and browse around right i used to a lot uh, i don't anymore i don't know i feel like if you're playing if you're playing something like Orleans, I'm so proud of you guys. You gotta know, or at least like look it up. I, 
I, I don't disagree with you. Like, if you are playing a game like Orléans, like, you probably are a gamer enough that, like, you're aware of, like, things like Meeple Source. The upgrade economy in general. Exactly. Right. Um, whether or not you stop to think a whether rebound, or not. A rebound to my thing, I will say, yeah. until I saw your... Uh, your first player tokens, the penguin thing that you got from from Meeple Source. Yeah, I had no idea what Meeple Source was. Uh, Literally, just a pretty up your game company. Yeah. yeah, the I mean, in 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 your defense, the only reason I'm super familiar with them is because they are the licensed distributor producer of all of the um, scythe upgrades. Yeah. And I think all of the, I think everything from Stonemire from, from Stonemire at this point now, because like that's where you get the the, the metal lira style. everything. So when they were releasing the promo packs and stuff early on, that's where I was going to get the stuff. Um, and like for expeditions, um, the I bought a whole extra coin set for expeditions, so I didn't have to transport my coin set from Scythe from Scythe. Um, the sweet nice 3d printed coin holder that they've got for it all of those things so but now i've gotten so much stuff from meeple source yeah well the other thing too meeple is source you learned that from me mm. we can be sponsors i'm well, sure you're all you're all would, watching this. they would be our they would be our sponsors <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying yeah we wouldn't sponsor oh sorry we can yeah. be partners we're sponsoring you by telling people how great your stuff is yeah that's true he, has, he spent at least $17 on your store. <laughs> at least two bucks have I've been spent. put towards the people's <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, but see, the other thing, though, is, is about upgrading components is that, like, as 3D printing and uh, or um, acrylics uh, printing is becoming... is it, Yeah, it's acrylic, right? No, no, no. What? Resin. Resin printing. That's the word I was looking for. Resin printing and 3D printing um, are becoming more accessible right like good question but, right like if you didn't want to spend the 40 50 dollars on the pavilions and the kiosks from Mark Nova that you bought you probably could have found a print for them so that but so that's so i have a very beginner printer like it's just pull this out of the box put plastic in it start printing stuff get your meat up i feel like <laughs> if i were to replace components of a game I would want a higher end printer or resin printer. Right, like all I would do right now, I would just print inserts. How much over the life of your collecting, collecting and upgrading is like buying an eight hundred dollar printer going to be worth it in the long run? You know, just how much does an insert cost? A so standard the folded, insert folded for folded space any ones game, are like 20, fifty bucks, twenty thirty for their foam inserts. Dude, I'm paying forty dollars for I think it's a folded space insert for maximum chrome. The Arc Nova one was like the Thunder Roads game. The Arc Nova one was like forty five. Oh, maybe I just I misread. Think, well, I, I mean, know. no, I mean, if you're talking about a smaller game or something like that, they might be cheaper, like a, a single size. But like, I think if you're getting into the bigger stuff, and and cost of everything has gone up too, right? So I don't know when the last time you That's looked. True, at I haven't it. bought a folded space organizer in a bit. But so, <clears throat> you know. Let's say, and I know plastic doesn't cost a ton, right? Um, oh, there's one. What do we get? Does it have a price on it? Probably not. Partnered with Aporta Games. It does not have a price on it. This no. was for Revive, and we have yet to do it. And we've actually played this game multiple $3, times. $3,000? Since getting this. <laughs> so let's say the net cost that you save per game is, we'll say, a generous $30. Right. What is the What is a good... 3D printer or resin printer to meet these expectations, what would that cost? I think about 800 bucks. I don't, I'm probably like five to between five and 700, I think. Okay, well, split the difference and we'll call it 600 because, because <laughs> that's what we'd like to do here. 600 divided by 30. You only have to print inserts for 20 of your games and you will have broken even. Yeah, and but you, you have will to, now have been, you got to do the work. I understand that. But you also got to do the work to put inserts together, right? You have to find the inserts, but a lot of them nowadays, like, there are so many different websites and stuff that, like, have free content. Yeah, like Thingiverse and all that stuff. But if it's, 
uh, otherwise, right, you're in Blender, which you could probably you probably could go in Blender, make the little kiosks, the little pavilions, and make them yourself for five dollars worth of material. I, I haven't even. T- I mean, I'm just talking about inserts, which are super easy to make. Generally speaking, like even if you don't have a print out there, you could take the time to be like, I need a box. This just big. mathing out your space, right? It wouldn't be exceedingly difficult if you get a little bit of skill. But yeah, then when you start trying to do 3D modeling and stuff, like. It, you know, the technology is, is rapidly catching up. There's going to be a point, I think, in the not-too-distant future where you'll be able to tell AI-generated, like, or an AI system to say, hey, like, here's a picture of a, of a kiosk, right? I want you to render a 3D model of this kiosk and port it into the software for this 3D printer. Like, mm-hmm. I'm that is within five years guaranteed. No doubt. There's probably a way where you can kind of cheat going like Unreal Engine, you know, put a little kiosk thing down in an otherwise blank Mm -hmm. space, do a camera pan around it yeah, and have some kind of, you know, program that was like measures it and is like, okay, we got it. Yeah. I have, I mean, in the digital spaces, zero doubt that any, that this is all possible and probably possible now if you have a little bit of skill, I think it'll become dummy proof in a couple of years. The next step I've seen there, they do 3D scanners, right? So you put your thing down and then the, the scanner will do a 3D model of it. So you'll be able to, at a certain point, be like, hey, I want to make miniatures for a game. And I've got my one Pronounce cop. Minotaur. Minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> what a stupid joke. And you, you want to make more of them, right? You want to make a bunch of zombies or like soldiers or something like that. You'll be able to just copy it. I think there'll be some serious problems with that from a, from an I, from an IP pro, uh, perspective for like custom miniatures and stuff because like oh like hey I'm gonna 3D print an entire Zombicide game yeah and sell it sell on, it on Etsy for twenty bucks something who knows drop shipping um that I mean that that kind of goes along with like the AI stuff right and like printing stuff that is not yours yeah and selling it you yeah know? yeah but that's I mean, just a that's a really just IP law. How much do you have to change before it becomes legit? Well, even if you, because you can't really like, you know how they say like, game mechanics are not, uh, can't like patent them, right? 10%. I think for most things you have to be 10% different, I think. Because that's one of the things like you're talking about like, all right, cool. (laughs) Minotaur, right? Nobody owns the image of a Minotaur. This is actually a Minotauro from... (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, like... Gun- Gungeons and Dragons. I mean, hell. Just, like, speaking of hell, um, <laughs> Dante and Inferno, the two games that just came out. Are those two different companies? They're two different companies, two very, very different games. One's a boss battler. The other is a worker placement Euro. type game. Yeah. So, but they both have miniatures, and several of the miniatures are themed the same, right? Like, there is a King Minos figure in both of them. That's the only one I remember positively being one in each. Of course, I think there's a Dante figure, of course. But the King Minos, right? It's a, it's a character, right? It's how they per- choose to render that. Like, again, there's only so much, like, variation that, you know, you can throw into that. And, I, and as long as it's not the same thing in the exact same pose, you're probably fine. Like, if I take the arm and I rotate it <laughs> down or something, is that enough? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. All right, well... I guess, um, I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. The I, verdict is, the jury is still out for another probably 50 years. Probably. Yeah. Kev might not be around anymore. I'll be dead. <laughs> I might not be around. We'll see. Hey, the world's ending. Actually, this is another video I'm Can doing. Can you see the gray in my beard? The world's supposed to end this year. But to go back at the question at hand, I, if I had to choose one the, or the, the other, go- I think I'd pick plastic. Yeah, he's right. Plastic for sure. Fuck the planet. I also choose plastic. <laughs> not for that. <laughs> but board and scale does not uh can't have board <laughs> you can't have the geek up bits in wood. It just don't work. It don't work. You know? Um all right, and with the I guess with the topic of components of wood and plastic being talked about, we should move on to uh the components that you would like to represent to you in a game. Yeah, so this is uh this is a question that do you want to lead it? You know this. I mean, this is yeah, your topic. Sure. Yeah, go for it. Um, so 
me, Kevin, and some other people, some other friends, we had started a game of Betrayal Legacy, and there were player colors, of course, but each of those colors had a family crest mm. that was a different symbol. So there was purple, but there was also an owl that was blue. I don't remember what the purple symbol was. Not a, not an owl, apparently. It wasn't an owl. Um, so the, the Mr. Charming Owl. <laughs> the the debacle was: Do I want purple or do I want an owl? Yeah. Because once you pick a family, that's your family for the game. So. Then the question arose: Do you does it what more, what matters more to you, the player color or what the thing is representing? Yeah, that the character, a symbol, symbol, a miniature animal, animal, whatever. Actually, in a, it, it matters more too in a legacy game if that's going to be. Like, yeah, I was just going to say in Ark Nova with the Marine World expansion, you get mm-hmm. animals, right? Yeah, instead and of cubes. This is what broke. This is what solidified my choice was I think I would rather pick the character. The character. Because let's say Ark Nova had pink uh, fucking snakes. I think I would still choose the penguins. Hater. <laughs> I mean, I th- something I th- ugly and stupid. And <laughs> I want to beat it up all the time hey. like a snake. <laughs> I think I. I I tend to agree that I'm going to pick a symbol or a character or an animal more, but it also depends on how well that thing is represented and how important that is in the game. So in Betrayal, it's pretty dead center on your card, right? I chose the owl, by the way, the blue owl. Yeah, I think I was, I went with uh, a, yellow a yellow sun because I was going with House Martell. Um, What's that from? Game of Thrones. Now it's gonna kill me. What's I don't Game of Thrones? Remember what that purple was? Um, is that a book? It's, it's like this. Uh, yeah, it's like this. Uh, it's a really niche thing that like a couple people were into for a few years. Um, oh, kind of like Dune. Yeah, kind of like that. But like, is there I don't a movie? Know. They're more. What is there a movie out or no? It's like a no, no. It was like mm. a show that a couple like it, it didn't last very long. Only also like seven seasons or a something. Flame. Like that. Probably so, it was like nineteen seventies. Yeah, it's like super old. Yeah, yeah. Like anyone who liked it like is a flame. That. flame, purple flame. I think so. I think that's what that is. Yeah. Well, it's, oh, you got it. Flame's kind of cool though. I mean, Anyways. at any rate, so um, <clears throat> no. So I think it depends. Yeah, that's lame. Uh, no, it's like a bird. Is that a bird? No, because the bird is green. Oh, that is a bird. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that was weird. Um, just so a like you. you <laughs> Using Ark Nova, so I always play as the red color whenever I have the option. Yeah. What is are this cheetahs? cheetahs? It's a deer. Oh, oh, in Ark Nova. Yeah, I don't I don't care. <laughs> in Ark Nova, the red is a is it's a, a cheetah. Cheetah. <laughs> in, cheetah. In betrayal, it's a deer. Oh. I don't care about the cheetah miniature. Like it doesn't look like a cheetah very well. It's just like a clearly a four legged animal a that could be a it could be a dog. Fell in it. it doesn't fell. have a very like pronounced snout. That's the only reason why you're like, well, I think it's probably a cat. But the point being is, is that it's very generic. So I, you know, the the penguin's the only one with any character because it's got the extra white on it. The little belly. Yeah. Yeah. So I also they, really they, like that they made it a pig. Do you think they were like, he needs a belly? Yeah. Well, we need to give him a honestly, if it didn't have a belly, you'd be like, what the fuck is that little? <laughs> it's just a short fucking, Oompa Loompa. Yeah, this, this little fucking troll. <laughs> he's just a guy. He's just a guy that works at the Like, he's literally room. just standing there with the two little feet. And he's yep. like looking. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Do you, do you think they made the, the meeples after the colors? Because, I mean, the fish is blue. Penguin's, penguin's black, black. Cheetah's red. But what's yellow? It'd be funny if Monkeys. the monkey was black. Monkey? That makes no. It would not be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they could have made the cheetah yellow. I'm laughing at the absurdity of you. <laughs> it's okay. I say I can say that. It's it's fine. It's okay. I think the uh, I think the cheetah should have been yellow, and the monkey would have been red. If you're gonna flip those, if you wanted those animals, I, I agree. Had to flip those. Too. I just think red is faster. Red is more like aggressive. Yellow is more of a intelligent color to me. Okay. Whoa, dude. 
<laughs> Society has ruined me. <laughs> All right, well, this is my resignation. (laughs) 20 some odd episodes in. Yeah. (laughs) Jesus. Didn't even hit the 100 sub mark. (laughs) Whatever. I guess we quit quit while we're behind. All right, continue, Kev. Do you remember what you were saying? Because uh, no, I think I basically just I, I agree that I'll take the, the persona, the character, the icon over the color. In most, in most of the time, unless it's not really important or it's not well represented, then I'll just default the color. <laughs> I can't believe you did that to me. <laughs> um, I will say I was pretty hard line on colors for the longest time in being. Red, 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 red. Lately, I'm kind of over red. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to pick the thing that looks cool. So that's why I've been giving red up to Kev lately. Is there a... Damn, hold dude. On. I thought Wait, he was being night. No, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> I thought you were being a good host and like, oh, yeah, you can have the red. You know what? I, you can have it. I was like, man, you know, that's out of the... Kind of, I'm, that's so nice. No, it's completely That's so nice. It's literally just you being like, I want more options. I want options. Like, so it might be obvious, like, oh, it's my favorite color. But y- there are three people, you two and Enrique, all red. Mm-hmm. You want to choose the red. Yeah. Is, there a, is there a why? Like, I've like, just always I mean, liked red. It's your favorite color. Every time I see if that's it, the obvious answer. my blood starts pumping and I just want to go. Bruh. I don't know. Yeah, it red. makes me angry, makes me violent. I get excited, you know. You're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna fuck someone's day. Up. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I I really have no idea why, to be honest. But it's just visually the most appealing color to me, you know. Red. I I mean, maroon is my favorite color, but like red, of of course, is like in the maroon is the maroon family or see maroon's yeah. in the red family. So like, that's just kind of the default. But like, it's funny because like I don't wear red, like red, red. Same. I don't like ever wear. I think I have like one or two things in my wardrobe that are like genuinely like I think race car red because it's so it, it prominent. I have yeah, loud. Like I can perceive it so much more. I feel like than other colors. So I'm like, if I wear a blue, green, whatever, pink, orange shirt, it's whatever. If I'm wearing a red shirt. I feel Look like at I'm, me. I feel like I'm sticking out like You're crazy. You're peacocking. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Maybe maybe my cones are all <laughs> focused on red, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't you know, know why. I mean, other than that. But the other thing, too, I mean, I like, I mean, I'll, I'll per- pick red if it's given to me as an option. But, like, I don't care enough. Like, we have, like, I've got that established deal with Enrique for the the player who won the last game that we played together, if there's red, they get red. I'm like, I'll maintain that because that's Enrique. <laughs> and but I like made anyone else. I don't care. And I made possibly the worst deal of all time ever that with Kenzie, his deal was, Hey, how about you get whatever you want all the time? <laughs> and if that's not available, then I get what I want. Pretty much. <laughs> The deal in question is, hey, if it's purple, you can have it. If there's only pink, I take it. That is almost when never the case. The fuck <laughs> is pink ever a color in a game? Yeah, I think I <laughs> only think, pink at that. And yeah, not purple. I think Wonderlands is one. Bunny, no, pink and purple exist. Purple is in Wonderlands. Is it? Yeah, I think it is. It's the Hatter. Yeah, it's purple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And pink is the Cheshire cat. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't even know my the example. I know there's I know Bunny there's, Kingdom was has it both Kanban? pink and purple. Kanban has doesn't have a one of them. Pink? I thought that was one where it was pink only. Are we gonna do it? Gonna take it up? Oh my god! I'm gonna die. Teamwork. Nope. There's purple. It's in there. purple. Yeah. Oh, we were just gonna go this way. Yeah. You can hear all the bits. Yeah, in it's there. purple. Oh, there's pink. Uh, yeah. Or no, pink is Sandra. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's she's, what it is. Mm, Fucking bitch. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry. Sandra's a hardworking lady and we respect her. 
publicly. We say whatever we want in private. Isn't it? There is a game that I know of. It's got to go long way. Oh, ways. the long way. Gotta Where f- pink flat. is the color and purple is not. Yeah, it's it's one of the games we've played here. We just rem- played uh, Tidal Blades. Uh, Banner, Banner Festival. Oh, pink the baby was in one? there, but purple is not. No, look at that. So you could have gotten your deal. You did. did, but it's Ken's wasn't there, so it didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when it's Dwayne, he just opens the game and takes whatever he wants and doesn't even offer it to anyone else. <laughs> no. Yeah. An- animal, dude. <laughs> you just throw the box to the side and just like... <laughs> <laughs> I will purposely <laughs> grab... I'll grab... I'm a fucking child. I'll grab all of the player pieces mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll I'll keep purple in my in my palm and be like pick your color <laughs> <laughs> every time, <laughs> every time. Hey, I'm gonna admit it. I gonna admit it. I never grew up. Hey, hey, look, you like <laughs> what you like. Menace. I mean, honestly, though, I mean, there's a certain point where, like, look, if that's something that enhances your play, like. I enjoy having red. Don't get me wrong. I don't care that much, though. And if somebody else will get some kind of joy out of it, I'll take whatever you want. So I usually let every people, every other people, pick their colors first, except for Enrique. <laughs> I also feel like a lot. Maybe it's just the games I'm playing, but a lot more of the games where I'm seeing are starting to have that, um, like character representation. Whether mm-hmm. it's like. Um, you know, a little player board that you have or like an encyclopedia, right? You have a male, female side of each board and mm-hmm. they're all different. Yeah. I pick the people that I think look the coolest. I think I do get red normally, but I don't care that much um, about the color there. You know, Arc Nova. I want to play with all the li- different little animals. So eventually I will be the fish, you know, just maybe not yet, mm. but I'll be the fish eventually. I don't know if like y'all do it, but something I do is... If the game ever, if I separate all of the player color pieces and setup and stuff, whatever, if there's like a round tracker or something that is a part of the game that like is neutral or something, I'll always throw it in the purple bag. Oh, because like it's always going to get picked. You're always going to play. Yeah, for sure. So I'll always have that stuff together. I do do that with the red one. I mean, if I pick it or somebody else picks it. I did put the coffee cup from Mark Nova in the red box or the red bag. Yeah. Because that's, it's going to get played. Yeah. No, you just, oh, do you know, go looking for it in the box or yeah. wherever it is. It's right. just there. Comment your preference if it's the, you'd rather pick a color or if you'd rather pick a character to represent you. And if it's a color, what's your favorite color? We want to know. And I think that's going to be all of it for. This week's episode of the Board and Scale podcast. We have been your host, co hosts, hostess, snake noises. Go ahead and follow us on Instagram, and I'll put that those links down in the description as well. And thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>